You know, most of the time when we hear about taxes, we hear about Democrats raise taxes, Republicans lower taxes. But when you study the history of taxes in the U.S., there's going to be many things today we're going to say, you got to be kidding me, Pat. Who came up with the IRS? You're going to be blown away by who came up with the IRS. The whole idea of holding your taxes when you get paid in your payroll, who came up with that idea? Which president raised the national debt the most? Which president raised the percentage and dollar amount? Then we're going to talk about the correlation between war and taxes and why does the U.S. have so many military bases around the world compared to Russia, China, France, all of that stuff we're covering in today's episode. All right, so stick around till the very end because I'm going to have my final thoughts on a PDF for you, but let's get right into it. 1754 to 1763. During that time, the French Indian War took place, which the Brits started taxing the colonists. And the colonists said, wait a minute, why are you raising taxes without asking us? How come we don't have any kind of representation? That led to taxation without representation. American Revolution began, and the founders wanted lower taxes and representation, which led to 1775 to 1783, the American Revolutionary War. By the time it was done, obviously, U.S. became a country, and U.S. had two forms of taxes, tariffs and excise taxes. So that led to the Tariff Act of 1789, which was a 50 cent tax on foreign ships per ton, and it was six cent tax on American-owned vessels per ton. Okay, so that's 1789. Then we go to 1792 to 1802, which was the French Revolutionary War, and this introduced us to property taxes. And then in 1812 to 1815, it was the War of 1812, U.S declared war against the Brits because the negotiation was going nowhere, so Madison wasn't happy about it. And by the way, the whole story about Star Spangled Banner comes from the War of 1812. So now it's when the juicy stuff begins. So in 1861 to 1865, civil war breaks out in America, right? It wasn't pretty, it was ugly, very expensive. That's when in 1862, a president known as one of the greatest president of all time, if not the greatest president of all time, Lincoln, came up with the Revenue Act of 1862, which lasted for 10 years. And in 1862 was the first ever progressive tax, 3% on income earners between $600 to $10,000 a year, 5% on those making $10,000 or more, only about 10% of Americans pay taxes. Abraham Lincoln, known as one of the greatest presidents of all time, I have him in one of my paintings in my office on July 1st, 1862. You know what he started? You know what he introduced to us? An organization you may have heard of before called the IRS. Yes, the IRS was started under Lincoln in 1862 with the idea of having the tax withholding system, which means you make $1,000 in a month. They wanted the employer to withhold the taxes to pay to the government. Why? Because Lincoln said, folks, we just had the Civil War. Very costly, very expensive. We got to pay this off. We need you to agree to pay some federal income taxes. But when we pay it off, we're going to get away with this. So guess what happened? Start in 1862. Do you think the federal income tax ever went away? It did. Ten years later, 1872, they said we paid off the war. Guess what? No more taxes. They went away with taxes and went back to what it used to be before. In 1894, Pollock versus Farmers Loan and Trust Company, 1895, Congress tried to impose a 2% tax on earnings in excess of $4,000. In 1894, tax was challenged in court by a Massachusetts resident named Charles Pollock the Supreme Court ruled in his favor, striking down the tax because you cannot go out there and tax anybody for no reason. But the Socialist Union Party, the Populist Party, and the Democratic Party sat there and says, we got to figure something out to be able to tax people. What is this all about? So in 1913, we came out with the 16th Amendment, and here's how it reads. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without appointment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. So that's how the first permanent income was levied in 1913, influenced by the Socialist Labor Party, the Populist Party, and the Democratic Party. It was 1% for those earning between zero to $20,000, 2% for those 20 to 50, 3% for 50 to 75, 4% for 75 to 100, 5% for 100 to 250, 6 for 250 to half a mil, and then 7% for 500,000 plus. So keep this in mind. So, so far we have the French and Indian War. We have the American Revolutionary War. We have the French Revolutionary War. We have the War of 1812. We have the Civil War. And then that leads to World War I, 1914 to 1918, which U.S. got involved April 2nd, 1917. Why does this matter? Because if you go back and look at the taxes, in 1916, the top line taxes was 15%. The moment we got involved in 1917, taxes went up to 67%. So that was another reason why taxes went up. Again, 
war. So then that goes to 1929 to 1933. Great Depression takes place. FDR is the president. And in 1933, FDR's New Deal is being launched, and there's two plans to it. Part one of the deal included the Banking Act of 1933 and the Securities Act of 1933. And part two of it was in 1935, which introduced Social Security, Minimum Wage, Fair Labor Standard Act, and by 1936, the top tax rate hit 79%, and the economy's output plummeted. What we still haven't covered is World War II from 1939 to 1945, which the U.S. got involved on December 7th, 1941. So combined the Great Depression and World War II led to, in 1945, when FDR died, the top marginal tax rate hit 94%. From 1940 to 1963, the top marginal tax rate hovered between 81 to 91%. That's for 24 years, 81 to 91%. By the way, just some fun facts for you. In 1939, 4 million Americans filed taxes. They raised $900 million of tax revenue. By 1943, 41 million people filed taxes for $13 billion of tax revenue. And two years later, 43 million people filed taxes, and the government's revenue went to $45 billion. So remember how in 1862, Lincoln comes out with the IRS and says, listen, we need to raise money, we need to raise taxes because of civil war was so expensive that it led to them coming up with the tax withholding system, which means the employer is about to pay the employee thousand dollars that you say they withhold the taxes and they send to the government. Remember that? And then it went away because Lincoln said, when we pay off this debt, this income tax will go away. And in 1872, it went away. Well, let's come to 1943. The war is still going on, World War II. The party, the socialists, the liberals, the Democrats went to get help from a guy named Milton Friedman where in 1943, he helped the tax withholding system become official where they could start taking taxes out of your income with the employer sending the money to the government. Essentially, the employer became the tax collector, not the government. And here's what Milton Friedman had to say about this later on in life. This would have been introduced had I been involved or not. At the time, we concentrated single-mindedly on promoting the war effort. We gave next to no consideration to any longer term consequences. It never occurred to me that at the time I was helping to develop machinery that would make possible a government that I would come to criticize severely as too large, too intrusive, too destructive of freedom, yet that was precisely what I was doing. Quote Milton Friedman. So you may be saying, Pat, what's the big deal about this? Who cares? Leave him alone. You even got Milton Friedman in your painting. Why, why are you making such a big deal about this? Here's why. Because when Lincoln did it, he said, when we pay off all the cost that we paid for the war, civil war, we will stop income taxes. However, in 1913, when Wilson introduced this, saying when we pay off the bill for World War I, when FDR said, when we pay off the bill for World War II, we will stop taking income taxes, it never went away. It became permanent. And then the tax withholding system, check, made it very permanent, FYI. You know how old this is? 78 years old. That's it. The whole tax withholding thing with your income when you get, your W-2 when you get, somebody takes all the taxes out, it's only 78 years old. Why? Because no one said anything about it, and it's now been around for this many years. So here's what's crazy about it. This entire time, Democrats keep raising taxes. You got Wilson, you got you know, uh, FDR here, taxes raised, 94%, 81%, all this stuff being raised. And then a JFK shows up and says, what are we doing? Why do we keep doing this? Why do we keep raising taxes? It is time to lower taxes. And he gives this legendary speech in August of 1962, and here's what he had to say. A creative tax cut, creating more jobs, income, and eventually more revenue. And the right time for that kind of bill now appears in the absence of an economic crisis today, and if the job is to be done in a responsible way, is January 1963. Such a bill will be presented to the Congress for action next year. It will increase an across the board, top to bottom, cut in both corporate and personal income taxes. It will include long needed tax reforms that logic and equity demand. And it will date that cutting taxes to take effect as of the start of next year, January 1963. The billions of dollars this bill will place in the hands of the consumer and our businessmen will both have immediate and permanent benefits to our economy. Every dollar released from taxation that is spent or invested will help create a new job and a new salary. And these new jobs and new salaries can create other jobs and other salaries and more customers and more growth for an expanding American economy. A democratic president for tax cuts and for entrepreneurs. Go figure, how confusing is this so far, right? By the way, 
When he said January 1st, 1963, he gave the speech on August 13th of 62. He died next year, November 22nd. The tax bill went into effect 64 under Lyndon Johnson. And here's what it looked like. He took the top line from 91 to 70 percent and he took corporate taxes from 52 to 48 percent this is in 1964 when this came out 17 years later in 1981 we had the economic recovery tax of 1981 by ronald reagan which this is what reagan did reagan lowered taxes pretty much for everybody tax rate the top line went from 70 to 50 bottom from 14 to 11 capital gains went from 28 percent to 21 Higher estate tax exemption went from 175,625 to 600,000 in 87. He established the IRA, the IRA for employees, and this was all helped through Arthur Laffer, the economist. And FYI, while Reagan came up with this in 1981, in 85, the IRS announced that America has officially produced 400,000 new millionaires due to Reagan's new tax laws. So now I'm gonna stop right here because I don't want this thing to be a 30 minute episode. Obviously after this we have Bush Sr., we have Clinton, we have Bush, we have Obama, we have Trump, and then we have Biden today, right? But I wanna kinda of show you a couple trends I noticed here, a couple things. Number one, a lot of times you'll hear about taxes. You know, rich don't pay taxes, poor pay too much taxes, the rich don't pay any taxes. I wanted to find out who actually pays the most taxes and what has happened over the years. Are the rich paying less taxes or are the rich paying more taxes? And here's what the data tells us. So there's two charts I want you to look at. The first one is the percentage of taxpayers. This is directly from the IRS, okay? Percentage of taxpayers, let's look at the bottom 50%. You can see the majority of the taxpayers is bottom 50%. Then the red is the top 25 to 50%. Then the gray is five to 10, the top one to 5%. And the black is the top 1%, the richest people. How much, how big of a population there is of the top 1%, right? The next one directly from the IRS is, is the 1% paying more or less over the year? If you look at from 1980 to 2018, the top 1% keeps paying more and more and more taxes. So does the top 5%, but the top 10% is about the same from 1980 till today. The top 25% is getting smaller. The top 50% is getting smaller, but the bottom 50% is definitely getting smaller and smaller and paying taxes. Now, some of you may be watching this political year on the left and you say, wait a minute, what are you saying? The, the top shouldn't be paying that much taxes? Look, the whole purpose of me doing it this way is to show how much contradiction there is on the left and the right. Why? Because everything about the timeline I showed was what? War, 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 war. Every time we have a war, there is consequences. Look how many times we have to raise taxes, come up with new taxes just to pay off debt from a war that we caused or we got involved in. This led me to find out how many military bases do we have worldwide? And how do we compare to other countries? If I were to ask you right now, how many military bases do you think U.S. has outside of the U.S. and how many countries, what would you say? You know what the number is? 800 foreign bases in 70 plus countries. Do you want to know how many military bases China has in foreign countries outside of China? You know how many it is? One is in Africa, right by the Suez Canal, the choke point. Why? Intentional. It's the only one they have because they're taking those resources and they're investing it in the current modern way of going to war. So now some of the folks on the right may be saying, well, what are you saying, Patrick? Are you saying taxes are going up because we're going to war too many times? Yes, America tends to get involved in too many wars that they don't need to be getting involved in. Why? Because of control. While instead of keeping that money and investing it into infrastructure, maybe in a different way for military, we're allowing China to get stronger because they only have one military base. By the way, you want to know how many Russia? You want to know how many France? You want to know how many Britain have? You want to know how many total they have combined? 30. They have 30 foreign bases. We have 800 America's aid, what do you think is the cost of that? So you see what's happening when I'm showing these debt. By the way, here's the other part. So some of you guys are saying, well, that's right. Republicans are you know, spending way too much money. Now, if I were to ask you a different question, which president do you think increased the national debt the most by percentage? Which one do you think is at the top? Ready? So here we go. Top percentage of national debt increase during their term. First place, FDR, 1,050%. Second place, Woodrow Wilson. 727%. By the way, FDR came out with the New Deal. Woodrow Wilson came out with the 16th Amendment. Third place, Ronald Reagan, 186%. Fourth, George Bush, 101. Barack Obama, 74%, although he has the biggest dollar amount 
of $8.59 trillion increase. Then it's George H.W. Bush, then it's Ford, then it's Carter, then it's Nixon, then it's Trump. After taking a deep dive into the topic of taxes, I realized even more that taxes is not black and white. There's a lot of gray area, whether it's political, the influence of it, the cause of it with war. But I was curious, the more I learned, I got another 50 pages that I haven't covered with you. If you want me to go even deeper with different forms of taxes, what other countries do with taxes, press the thumbs up button and share this episode. If this does well, I'll probably do another part two to this. And if you want today's message in a PDF, text the word tax to 310-340-113 to one more time, text the word tax, T-A-X, to 310-340-1132. And if you're not in the States, go in the description, click on a newsletter, subscribe to it, and we'll send you the PDF to you as well. And last but not least, I did another episode similar to this on the topic of inflation. If you've not watched it, click over here to watch that episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.